Sit yourself down, mm. turn your ears on. Yeah. It's time for a quickie. Get comfortable. Get comfy. This is the episode for you. This is where we do questions that have either been posted by you in the group, sent in by you, or found sometimes in the random places on the internet where we find ourselves, usually Reddit. <laughs> um, I thought I'd make a little bit of an announcement at the start of this, is that Tom and I are going to have a tiny bit of a holiday. And by tiny bit of a holiday, I mean we're literally extending our recording schedule by about two weeks. But for you, it means that you're going to have four minis in a row instead of two mains and two minis That's for the right. next four weeks. So uh, the, get used to the, the mini-sodes for the, next, for the next month, everybody. And look, Thank you for understanding. don't complain because we're still bringing you sweet, sweet yeah, content. You still get to like, hear our voices. You could have four weeks of nothing. Think about that. Think of how bereft you would be <laughs> should that occur. Yes, the, 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 the huge void that uh, would circle your life without no, us. No, Liz and Tom, what will we do with ourselves? So this is a questions episode. Um, I have some questions that I didn't get to read out on last quickie from a post that I made in our Ghost of Boyfriend past podcast group can therapy I just, group. Can I just quickly say to everybody listening, what a delight it is that you're still writing to us and still getting involved with this little show after years and years and years. It's been, it's very nice. We both appreciate it greatly. Very, very much so. And please keep on sending anything you want to send us, whether it be on that group or whether it be guest applications. What we want to do in this, and I say time off very loosely, is try, because after four years, we've, we've, we've had a fair amount of guests on the show. Mm. So I'm going to put out the feelers to get some new guests with some fantastic stories for you guys. So if you've been thinking, mm, I really should write in, or I really should be on the show, or I really should, don't should yourself anymore, do it. Do it because we are looking and we are selecting and we are choosing right now. I have a question from our Ghost of Boyfriends Past Group Therapy group. Seeking an opinion from you both, how important is it to thank your partner for things that they do for you, be they large or small? Personally, I think it is vital, but I'm in a discussion with friends and apparently I am in the minority. They all seem to think that it is implicit somehow. I agree with you, reader, absolutely. Because I think if you're in a relationship and... You don't get thanked for the small things. It can lead to being taken for granted in a big way. Like, I like to show my... I'm like, thank you for doing that thing, you know? Absolutely. And I, I too, agree. The thing, it's so easy to do, is my... Yeah. Is my opinion. My my lovely lady, uh, yesterday at time of recording, um, after work, uh, picked up some groceries, so we had some food for tonight, tomorrow, you know. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing that, darling. I really appreciate it. Instant, I'm instantly in the good books yeah. for, for an acknowledging and appreciating. And it took me five seconds. And it's just a, it's such an easy, if you're, if you want to. You can to make someone's day with two seconds. And anyone who goes, well, it's implied that I'm thanking you. It, it just reminds me of those fucking exes of mine that were like, well, I'm with you, aren't I? Like, I wouldn't, mm, I wouldn't yeah. be with you if I didn't love you. So what, I have to say it all the time. I'm like, you have to say it because it makes someone else feel good. Yeah, I, 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 Maybe it's nice to be nice, you know. And plus you may think that you are thanking people but you're not. Like if you don't actually make space in your brain to say thank you, mm. I really appreciate that, you might not realise how much somebody else is doing for you. It doesn't. And whereas they might be keeping tally of how many things they've done that you've not thanked them for and get resentful. So yes, like, that's right. If you've ever found yourself in a relationship and you're quietly simmering because you've done a chore, etc., that the other person has to, hasn't acknowledged, well, that's there's your that's yeah. your answer they, because you if you have if you're not saying. Darling, you did the you cleaned the kitchen. Thank you, thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. If you're not doing that, they're not going to give it back to you. So you have no right to sit and simmer on in anger. Yeah. Ooh, I'm not being appreciated here. And it doesn't have to be overkill. It's no, not like no, thank God, you no. so much for moving on the couch so that I could sit down. Like it's actual acts of service, but little things like thanks for refilling the soap container, or thanks for buying a meal that I really like, or you know. Thanks for, I don't know, giving me a hug before work and this you, morning. That if you really don't nice. have it in you to do it for every little, like for a lot of little moments, save the, save them all up and and at the end of the week say, sweetheart, thank you. I, I've noticed the effort that you've uh, been making around the house. I really appreciate it. Get one over, uh, one big one yeah. over, and, over and done with. But yeah, uh, I don't, I agree. I don't like the, 
when I'm in the, f- I mean, I'm yeah, dating you. What else do I need? What so else do I need? You want what? You want attention and respect? Oh God. And, you know, no. I, 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 respect. <laughs> respect is implied, Tom. Yeah, I'm already, I'm already here. Hmm. We've had one response on the in the group that I thought was interesting to share. Um, uh, it says, me personally, I do, this is from another person, I do like to be thanked verbally and I make sure that I do that for others as well. I guess that has something to do with how I was brought up and the behaviours I've seen modelled. So naturally that is carried through to adulthood. I think it is vitally important to at least show gratitude in some kind of way. I'm an acts of service, words of affirmation gal, so love languages. Otherwise people can feel as though they're being used or taken for granted. If you don't, that's a one-way ticket to ciao, adios, mm. I'm done. Yes, I'll see the scene. Yes. Uh, yes, very good. No, I, I agree, and it seems we're all in agreement. But if you disagree with us for any particular read- uh, reason, readers, let us know. You are, you, uh, your opinion is valid. Uh, you can disagree with us and Tom. You can let us know. I mean, you'd be know. wrong. We but wouldn't <laughs> agree with you. <laughs> but in the, no, actually, for, look, for I want to know. Discourse, yeah, uh, I want to know why you wouldn't say thank you. Or if you think you are and it's not being appreciated or heard, I'd like to hear that story too. Mm, interesting. Now, we've covered... We've kind of covered this before, Liz, but I want to explore it more because any my question is, when should you discuss big topics like politics, like abo- like religion, like a, because part of me says, well, when you're if you're first dating someone, do you do you sit down? Wouldn't it be efficient to just have a shopping list of the world's biggest, most controversial topics and go? Uh, a you Y N B Y N and and then go as soon as there's yes, you, about, you go but. or the, the 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 dance of figuring out someone else learning and you I don't know. So I tend to have the opinion that dating is very much a dance. I mm. guess to to take that metaphor in that if you are too analytical at the start, the romance won't grow. Yeah. And if you are too romantic at the start, then you're rose-coloured glasses. So I think it's a really delicate balance of letting feelings grow at the same time as knowing what you're getting into. Mm. So no one wants to sit down on Like no one's going to be like, I'm going to go on a second date with this person if someone pulls out a sheet of paper and starts checking, <laughs> yes, literally checking boxes, right? Um, but at the same time, <laughs> Zane's just looked up and gone, uh, I might. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's nodding. He probably would. Um, look, that, and that's a certain type of person, but it's it's not universal, right? Mm, I'm not going to want to feel like I'm being measured against other people. So you've got to have do the dance of. I think it's got to be relatively early, like when you start realizing that you actually might like the person, or there might be a future, or you don't immediately want to run away. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I don't know. I it's such a difficult topic. Like I I will immediately get the ick if someone has the polar like if we if we sort of agree on most politics things that's fine and religion I'm open. Like I think of myself as agnostic um which is oh, pick a side. Get off that fence. No, I am 100% sitting on that fucking fence. Um I was atheist for a very long time, but I just Oh, I don't know. Just <laughs> that's fine. You don't have to answer here. That's on this. exactly why I'm agnostic because I don't know. But uh, and it's anecdotal. Um, but I've seen uh, I'll say, uh, women online say, "I can't believe my I've just found out my husband doesn't believe in abortion, or my husband doesn't want kids." And I it's, no, it's you can't get to you cannot How get to can marriage you get to that point no. without discussing like these huge topics. Yeah, mm. there's no like I there's no way that that wouldn't be discussed in at least the first three months with me. Yeah, at it's least gonna, you, you want to. You and want I to don't. Find out I early. hesitate to put a time frame on it, but that's when like six months you're in, right? Three yeah, months yeah. you can still be a little bit in out. Yep. Definitely, probably not in the first two or three dates, but in the first three months, I will have had all those conversations. Mm. Because honestly, if you're going to tell me that you love Trump, that's an instant ick and I'm out. I'm mm. sorry. Yes. <laughs> I just know. And it's not because of him as a person. It's because I know that you and I are not going to have compatible values. Um, I would say it is because of him as a person. Yes, yeah, true. Um, I could bag that man for 10 minutes straight without uh, copying an insult. But uh, that's a conversation that you would want to have I would never have a ring on my finger without having discussed yeah. those things. Mm. Absolutely not. Yeah, so it is a it's tri- it's interesting because in the you have to have these bigger heavier conversations in the earlier stages of a relationship, right? 
So you, mm. the thing's qu- quite new and lovely, but you still you have to get the get the needle out and go. What do you think of this? What do you think of this? How are we yeah. doing? You know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, tricky, but yes, sooner rather than later. I yeah, think but not too soon. Like not not yeah, at not the first f- date. Not, not first date. No, no, no. Okay, so I've got one to. I reckon we can finish on this one um, because right. I think it will be a little bit of a debater. Well, not a debater. I think you'll have a very certain answer to it, but Ooh. it's kind of complicated. Anyway, I'll just Billy go. Joel. Let me Sorry. just go. Um, how do you think it's best to approach conversations with a friend who is in their early 20s and dating someone showing narcissistic traits and doesn't entirely love her experience with him but doesn't think that there's anybody else out there that she'll be as attractive to physically, attractive, not attracted, especially when you in your mid-30s are trying to give the gift of experience? Now, I feel like this one's pretty... Do you personal? Mm. Um, this is actually from a uh, former guest of the show and communications expert, Jess. Uh, yes. uh, she says, I have an idea of how to approach, but I love hearing other people's perspectives. Mm. How would you How would you go about that? So is it, it's a younger friend, is yeah, it? Yeah, early 20s who's dating someone and not 100% loving their experience and he's a little bit showing narcissistic traits, but she's like, I'm just not sure I'm attractive to anyone else. It's that whole I'd rather be with someone who's not great than be alone. Yeah. See, any time – so young 20s, teenagers to young to, to your young 20s, I, rem- I remember any time an, an older person comes to you to, to – to, to give you advice or tell you inquire about your life, you don't want to hear it, no, right? You know, don't you get out not. of my you old person. You don't understand. So it's, so it's hard to do. It's hard to sort of even say, uh, even start the the hey, I care about you. I have things that you need to that yeah. I think you might want to hear or need to hear because you're so. That's the first fucking hurdle is with a younger with a younger person. I think it depends on which kind of friend you are, right? Yeah, that's true. So if you're the tough love friend, then feel free to be like, you're dating a fucking loser, right? Like me personally, I would try and up their self-esteem by stealth, right? So I would basically rather than criticise him because they'd be like, well, you don't understand, you don't blah, blah, blah. I would try and figure out ways to make their self-esteem so fucking high that they realise themselves that they deserve better. Yes, and I think a tact uh, that we as adults fail with is we we tell we're I reckon asking questions is the better but get them Absolutely. talk get them figuring it out and it's a, it's just classic psychology I suppose but get them f- f- let them figure it out themselves instead of oi I'm gonna tell you what's best for you and you better and you're gonna li- you're gonna listen now so yeah you just you say eight billion people on the planet my 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 little chickadee you reckon there's one person that that you can work with at you know start yeah. be start fucking big yeah. like that i'd be like how do you feel when you're with them yeah that's right does he does he uh, value you does he make you does he hold you up does he make you feel feel good in yourself yeah this mm. i would so i'd ask questions probably uh, yeah. is how i'd i'd attack yeah. that I, and a lot of them would be if they were telling me something and it was red flaggy i'd be like and i'd be the old therapisty how do you feel about mm. that mm. you know like forcing someone to confront their feelings while at the same time being like you're a fucking goddess and any yep. one of these people would be lucky to, if you let them lick your fucking boots let alone date this narcissistic fuckbag yeah, no i probably wouldn't say that straight away <laughs> but that's the conversation that you'd have after about six months and i'd be like listen i'm fucking tired of this you're seeing an asshole mm. um but before that yeah because obviously if she doesn't think she's attractive enough then her problem is with her self-esteem yeah that's right she's Poor not thing. valuing how shit hot she is and how you know what being single is fun and fine. It's not like, oh, God, I'd rather be treated like an asshole than be – like there is a third option and it's be single and have fun. Bit of Tom Harris wisdom here for you. Okay. Um, I used to think I was ugly, but now I realise that I'm just not my own, my, my own type. Love right? it. That's the Love that's it. the fucking way to go. Yeah. You think you're unattractive, but yeah. someone out here will think be all about it. Yeah. And let that person who's all about it and – 
will treat you nice. Yeah. Like choose someone Let like them that. Love you. Yeah. You know. Mm. All right, my friends, we are off again. Yes. So this has been another little quickie episode. We are going to have a couple of quickies in a row just to give Tom and I time to get our little duckies in a row. We're selecting some new guests to make sure that we are bringing you the best or funnest or silliest or saddest or greatest or I don't know most trivially amusing stories that we can find. If you've got a story that's even a little bit any of those things, please write in. Mm. Ghost of Boyfriends Past at gmail.com or we'll contact to- us on any of the social medias because we are recruiting right now. And if you don't apply, you'll never know. Mm. Uh, I'd love to know if you've ever had to sit down with someone not uh, in a similar uh, in a similar realm and and sort of talk them through because it's not it's tricky. Just get <laughs> just get Emma back on to talk yeah. about me, yeah. Emma and the Gaslight <laughs> Friend, <laughs> way back in yeah, season we'll one. Just that. Uh, yeah, she's had that conversation with uh, little on me a few times, except it's been a lot. Uh, a lot less word how do you feel about it? more of that that dickhead <laughs> yeah <laughs> alright until next time everybody yeah, just make well. sure that you're communicating well with each other